Hello and welcome to another episode of Kuya Dev Tidbits. And I am Rem, your Kuya Dev. And for today, we will discuss something na madalas tanungin, madalas ko nang marinig na tanong ng mga nagtatangkang magkaroon ng career in the tech industry. Be it career shifter or especially yung mga ano, yung mga galing high school. So, ano nga ba ang mas effective na na path towards a tech career? Mag uh, university ka ba or college? Kuha ka ng diploma? A, an IT or computer science degree? Or mag bootcamp ka? Or you know, tulad ng ginawa ko and uh, a bunch of other people I know Excel study. So, long story short, ang sagot dyan, para lang, ano, uh, yung short answer is kahit ano, actually. <laughs> kahit ano. But of course, didiscuss natin kung bakit ganun. Ba't ganun yung sagot ko? Personally, may bias ako. Kasi, syempre, yung pinanggalingan ko is self-taught. And I've also undergone university. Uh, I've also gotten myself a university degree. Pero hindi related sa, sa programming or uh, web development. Pero na-experience ko yung side na yun. So, may comparison ako uh, ng self-study and, you know, going to college. And sa ano naman, sa bootcamps naman, I know people who got into bootcamps and I also know people na sila mismo nagturo sa bootcamps. So, yeah. I I have uh, some context and uh, some comparisons. But, be be warned lang na this is my experience you know this is not really conclusive kasi anecdotal siya meaning based on someone's experience so yung experience ng iba maaring very different from what i ano what i experienced so that aside let's try discussing yung yung nag-experience ko and what my thoughts about you know yung tatlong paths towards a tech career so for me depende rin kasi sa mga tao eh like ako sinasabi ko sa inyo mahirap talaga makapasok sa tech kahit na ano pa yung path na piliin nyo And I believe that there are several paths. Maraming, maraming pwedeng paraan para makapasok sa tech. Mahirap, pero maraming paraan. Di ba? Parang medyo contradicting. But it works that way. Sobrang kulit nga. Na, yun nga, parang tulad nung tech, career, uh, tech talent shortage na nangyayari ngayon, kulang sa tech talent. Pero mahirap di makapasok. So, di ba? Ang gulo. But that's just the way it is, na. So, balik tayo sa, sa topic, na, ayun nga. Sa episode na to, tatlong paths lang muna ang ano natin. But, uh, kahit ano pa yung path na, na tahakin nyo, papasok talaga dun sa tatlong yun, eh. Either mag uh, self-study ka, punta ka, punta ka sa college, get a degree, or boot ka. Of course, i-discuss muna natin yung university degree. And I want to note, or let's take note na we are just uh, discussing in terms of a tech career. Although pwedeng mag-apply ng mga sasabihin natin to other uh, other careers or other industries for this particular episode, tech career lang talaga siya. Kasi talagang 
100% it applies to the tech industry. So, so university, I've been there, and I know na yeah, you learn things uh, sa, sa university and college. You spend what? Myself, I spent four years. Five, uh, no, I actually I spent five, six years eh, sa college. And another three years sa master's sa graduate school. Parami ako natutunan, but everything has been, you know, theoretical. When I graduated as an electrical engineer and I got my first job, parang yung naaral ko sa college, nothing mattered. I mean, you know, meron kayong common language ng, ng mga ka- kaopisina mo, but dun sa naging trabaho ko, it never really mattered. Yung parang pinaka nagamit ko lang doon is yung basics eh. Basics lang ng electrical engineering eh. And you don't need very complicated formulas to perform my job. I never needed those. Plus minus lang. Literal. And if you ever needed a formula or a, a concept, ang dali lang naman i-search sa Google. But that's electrical engineering. Sa tech industry, ganun din eh. Ang importante kayo sa tech industry is mabilis ka matuto or willing ka matuto. Ang pinakamatinding or pinakamalaking skill na pwede mong i-leverage sa tech industry is the capacity to learn on the fly and the willingness to learn. Kung gaano ka bilis matuto, gaano ka galing mag-research sa um, gaano ka galing mag-Google actually. Because sobrang broad ng industry ng computer science. Eh, kahit web development lang, kahit JavaScript lang 'yan. Kahit one language lang 'yan, sobrang broad na hindi mo kayang ma-master lahat. And I don't even try to master everything. So, sumuko na ako. I just, you know, mayroon ka lang familiarity sa mga bagay-bagay. So, yun nga. Sa university, they give you everything that they think that you will need in the industry. That's kind of a problem kasi most people in the academe don't even know what the industry needs or what companies need like nun nakaraan lang we were talking to to an uh, someone from the academe and tinanong namin sila there was some event eh. and people uh, they were only allowing participants to use particular languages tinanong namin sila bakit din nyo ina-allow tong ibang languages? And it wasn't even a, a strictly university event. Parang ano siya eh, organization siya eh. And uh, it, w- it doesn't matter kung ano yung programming language na gamitin mo eh. And they told us na wala kasi sa curriculum nila. Like yung programming language languages na ginamit or pinapagamit sa mga participants was okay uh, sabihin na natin medyo uh, required din naman ng industry but yung sinasabi namin na isang programming language di ko na lang babanggitin was actually one of the or one of the uh, hottest programming languages right now. And dismiss nila yon. So, ang tating sa amin is, why aren't you allowing your students to learn other stuff? 
especially stuff na kailangan actually ng industry. And well, that's a topic for another uh, podcast, but you know, they were just close-minded. So, personally, ako, lalo to, lalabas na yung bias ko. Feeling ko pagka ako nagkaanak, at this day and age, and he wants to to pursue a tech career, I won't advise him to go to college. One, because it's a huge commitment. Very huge. You would need at least four years. Mag spend kana four years to learn a lot, a lot of uh, concepts. Na karamiya naman di mo na magagamit sa trabaho. They're important to learn and to 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 to, uh, to understand. <coughs> Excuse. They're important. Uh, I won't I won't dispute that. But to perform your job, really, unless siempre gusto mo mag no magi researcher. Kailangan mo. But to perform a job as a dev, uh, web dev or you know soft general software developer, you don't really need it. You don't really need the inner workings of workings of a database or how you know TCP IP works. Siguro pag kailangan de debug, sa kamo lang aralin, no? As needed. Yun yung yun yung ano dun, keyword dun eh. as needed learn as needed you know? just gain familiarity or you no know? parang maganda parang meron kang sa utak mo meron ka lang table of contents na anytime pwede mong alam mo kung paano i-research isang bagay you no know? parang may may makita kang problem ah baka ito yan test your assumptions research So, university is kind of failing in that way. Yung nga, four years na commitment and yun, yung tuition pa. Magbabayad ka pa. Medyo mas swerte tayo sa Pilipinas kasi hindi ganun kasing mahal ng education dito, college education dito compared sa some place like US na talagang antindi ng ng student loans doon and even Australia. Na there are students actually or there are people na foregoing college kasi hindi na nila kaya and they're turning turning out to be okay lalo na sa Pilip- uh, lalo na sa Pilipinas uh, lalo na sa tech industry Dito sa Pilipinas siguro iba pa rin yung mindset but if you look at international employers na kumukuha ng mga remote developers dito or even recruiting them to bring them to their countries they don't even look at the college degree anymore personally ako rin I don't look at your college college degree because it doesn't prove anything it proves that you know how to study it proves na kaya mong ano you can work within a system But to do the job that's particular to our company, it doesn't prove anything. So yeah, I mean, I'm not really discounting a university uh, education. No. Gusto ko talaga na ano yun, mag, mag, mag-evolve sila, gumanda yung, yung system. But right now, you know, it's not really fulfilling the needs of industry. Lalo na yung sa Pilipinas, ang daming diploma mill. I mean, sige, papunta ka sa UP. UP Diliman, Ateneo, La Salle, UST, FEU, yung mga top schools. Yeah, go, go ahead. They still have that value within Philippines. Outside of the Philippines, they mean nothing. And trust me on this. We don't really uh, 
discriminate d- discriminate based on schools anymore sa, sa, sa current employer ko and personally i don't discriminate based on school but i i, I understand the pagka eh, graduate ka ng UP merong you know certain kind uh, kind of or uh, certain level of uh skill and intellect na by default kapasok ka na UP eh. by default magaling ka ano maybe me factor din na uh, yun mamamold ka na UP into something really good but tingin ko by default yung mga napapasok sa mga sa mga universities na yan yung mga top universities magaling na sila by default So, mas malaki yung chance na magaling talaga sila pag graduate nila, di ba? But yung mga di tayo magbabanggit na schools, but there are diploma mills there na ginagatasan lang talaga yung mga estudyante. Pineperahan lang. And uh, oh, sayang lang, sayang. But of course, yun nga depende pa rin sa tao. Like, if you're someone na na thrives in that kind of system and you need structure sa learning mo go with university so yun going go, going from university to bootcamp naman bootcamps depende depende sa 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 program depende sa target mo na industry But in general, okay din. Okay din. Some of them kasi may, ano eh, may guarantee na they would give your money back pag di ka nakakuha ng trabaho. Which is very important kasi ang pinakamahalaga lang naman talaga sa, sa ganito pag nagsisimula ka is to get your foot inside the door. Yun lang. Maka isang trabaho ka lang. The rest of your career magiging okay na. Yun yung pinakamahirap na step eh. Going from zero experience or zero jobs in tech to one job in tech. Yun yung pinakamahirap. So if a bootcamp helps in that way, go ahead. Kung matutulong ang kanila, you know, pati yung coaching ng career mo, in interviews, and of course, if you also thrive in that kind of environment na structured go ahead do a bootcamp and if you have the money but between university and a bootcamp ako personally I'll choose bootcamp kasi mas maikli yung oras mas maikli yung time commitment and yung kailangan na pera na gastosin so yung masisave mo gamitin mo pang ano, pang ano, pambili ng online courses kung gusto mo ano, di ba? And you know, pang host ng mga projects mo. And most bootcamps curriculums are very focused. And compared with universities, bootcamps, most bootcamps, not all they have a feel of what the industry needs. And in fact, yung iba dyan, may mga partnerships with employers, with companies. So, tipong otong oh, batch na to, itrain nyo, yung mga galing dyan, kukunin na namin. Parang ganun. May mga, may mga ano yung iba dyan, yung ibang bootcamps dyan, may, may mga partnerships sa mga employer. Kasi sobrang init ng, ng tech career market ngayon, tech talent market, na kailangan gumawa ng mga companies na yan, ng paraan para makakuha with, ng, ng mga talent na kailangan nila. They have to be creative. And one way is to partner with bootcamps. At mas pabilis ang turnaround. Like three, six months? may talent na sila as opposed to partnering with a university aantayin mo ng ano four years five years bago makuha yung 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 kailangan 
bago makuha ng company, yung kailangan nila na talent, mag-aantay pa sila. And hindi pa sigurado kung updated nga yung alam nila. So, that's happening right now. Of course, yung, 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 yung thinking ko, global ah, hindi masyado sa local kasi iba pa rin yung galawan sa local eh. Napakalaga pa rin yung universities eh. So, you know, yun nga. Isa pang consideration yun. Kung gusto mong local company sa maging employer mo, which uh, I don't really... Basta. Basta, kung, local companies, kung gusto mong magtrabaho sa mga local companies, conglomerates, yeah, go ahead and get a university degree. Otherwise, there might be better options. Like, you know, bootcamp. So, mapunta naman tayo sa self-learning. A self-learning route naman, mas mura. Kasi usually, may mga free, free resources dyan na makakatulong sa'yo. Hindi mo kailangan gumastos. But I still, I still um, advise na gumastos ka rin kahit pa no? bili ka ng mga courses mga top rated courses sa places like Udemy or EDX or Coursera mga ganun magkano lang naman eh usually nakaan pa yan mga naka-fail pa eh magkano lang yan at kung kumpara mo dun sa gagastusin mo sa university or bootcamp mas makakamura ka But, may caveat. Kung ano man yung certi- certificate na makuha mo doon, di, parang diploma rin. Walang silbi. Sa, sa tech industry. With, of course, may exceptions. Like, no, AWS certificates or Cisco. But, you know, uh, karamihan na certificates, walang silbi. So, Pagka self-learner ka, go for the learning. Huwag ka mag-focus sa certificates. Ako personally, nilagay ko pa rin sa, ano ko, sa profile ko sa LinkedIn. Just because. Kasi it makes, it makes my profile easy to, easier to find. Kasi nga may mga keywords doon. But in general, it's, no, it's worthless. So, yeah. Yun yung caveat doon, and of course, may certain kind of discipline na kailangan para maging su- uh, successful na self- self-learner. Kailangan disiplinado ka sa oras mo. Like, you would have to forego your your uh, your so- social life. You, know? you would have to sacrifice some things. You could argue, gaganon din naman pagka nag-bootcamp ka and uh, nag-university ka. But here, because wala kang parang, ano yun, uh, sasang- sasandalan ng mga instructors, professors, kaklase, you're on your own. So you would have to exert talagang times two, times three na effort. But I'm telling you, between the this, these three options, yun nga, lalabas ang bias ko, warning, dun tayo sa self-learning. So to compensate nga na wala kang klase, wala kang professors, Anong pwede mong gawin? If you're a self-learner. Para, you know, you, you could still get mentoring. And, uh, you know, uh, you know may, may, may study group ka. Join communities. Communities ang tutulong sa'yo. To, to make things easier. And it goes hand in hand kasi pagka self-learner ka, you have to really learn in public. You have to 
make it known to the world, to your circle, to the uh, within your circle, and to the rest of the the tech world. Na nag-aaral ka mag-code. And one way to do that is joining communities. And bonus sa inyo mga nakikinig. A lot of us community people, tech community people, are always on the lookout for tech talent. Ako lang, kaka-hire ko lang ng dalawang developer para sa team namin. I didn't exert much effort trying to find talent. Nagpaano lang ako sa community namin. Sinong pwede? Sino bang libre dyan? Sinong interested? Tapos yung teammate ko, ganun din yung ginawa. Sa community rin naghanap. And in a matter of one, two weeks, they got hired. Walang tech exam because vetted na sila. Hindi na namin kailangan ng tech, ano, bigyan ng tech exam. Although, personally, I don't give tech exams. But, alam mo na yung tao eh. Kilala mo eh. Nakita mo siya nag-aaral eh. ba? Diba? Nakita mo paano, paano siya nagsimula at eh, nagpursig eh para matutunan yung mga bagay-bagay. And that's, you know, that's the beauty and that's the value of communities. Lalo na pagka self-learner ka. Pagka na-establish mo yung network mo doon, it gives you a lot of opportunities or it opens you up to a lot of opportunities na baka, you know, someone in that network or in that community is, is trying to find talent tapos makita ka, uy, pwede ka ba? Like, Sige, subukan ka namin. Nakikita kita nag-aaral eh. Di ba? So yeah, if you have to choose, or if I had to choose right now, I'd still go the self-learning route. But, there's still another option. Ito lang, pagkakaya nyo, lalo na pagkabata or student kayo, you could also do hybrid. No? Kung kaya mong pagsabay-sabay yung tatlo Although it's not always a guarantee It Increases your chances Of getting into tech no? University ka Nag-aaral Then maybe on your free time Or during summer break Or Christmas break Meron ba? Hindi ko alam During uh, summer break you, uh, Most likely may bootcamp yan, pwede mo, no? Pwede ka mag-enroll. Kung may pera ka, oh, maswerte ka, mayamang ka na, may, or, nakapag-ipong ka na funds. You can do that. Then, sali-sali sa, sa communities. That increases your chances. Diba? It doesn't have to be just one. You can combine two or even all of these options. Basta ang pinaka-objective is to land that first job. So, I have a lot more to say about this this topic. Kaso, magka-30 minutes na. Napahaba. Um, I would like to thank you to for, for listening uh, in this episode. And if you want me to, you know, Discuss this further kasi ang dami pa eh. Dami pwede pag-usapan dito sa topic na to. You could just, you know, message me maybe. I could do an, a part two of this topic. But yeah, I leave it at that. You know, uh, there's no real real answer. Depende pa rin sa'yo. For me, I go for for the self-learning route. Baka ikaw, mas gusto mo yung structured Oh, pwede kang mag-university? Or maybe may college degree ka na, hindi lang related sa sa, sa tech industry. Mag-bootcamp ka na lang, kaysa mag-college ka na naman, di ba? Or self-learning ka, you know, kung disiplinado ka. 
Iba-iba eh. May kanya-kanya tayong ano eh. Kanya-kanya tayong template. Uh, so, whatever you you choose, you know, make it so that it will be easier for you to land the job. Maraming paraan niya. You know? Yun nga. Tulad ng learn in public, join communities. And so, I, uh, I, le- I let me end this episode on that note and uh, I want to see you next episode uh, thank you and good day <laughs>